Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is the last part of an interview series that I've done with Codestrap. I'm going to link his channel in the description box below. And in this one, we're going to talk about what is the best case scenario and the worst case scenario for Palantir as a company and how he saved literally millions of dollars in six hours using the Foundry platform and how uh, crazy powerful that platform is. So if you like this content, as always, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you want to go further, check out the first link in the description box below, which takes you to our Patreon, where you can support the channel from five bucks a month. And I really appreciate if you do that. And now enjoy the content. Okay, so if we talk about best case scenario for Palantir, is that they become like a norm and they become the operating system of like the data operating system of the West. Yep, and which I believe become, will happen eventually. Yeah, but, and and then they will have companies making apps on the Foundry uh, platform, which will be themselves be billion dollar businesses in exactly. in the future. So exactly. this is so if this is true, yeah. I mean, we we are not talking stock price, but it's very good for the company. I mean, you guys, if you guys want, if you doubt that vision, just go watch my Foundry for gaming demos. I'm literally building a Google Analytics amplitude like A/B testing platform in Foundry, right? Using Foundry yeah. native tooling. OK, and yeah. and like to give you an idea, like Google Analytics, the entry point is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the enterprise plan. And you again, ah, you, you, mean, you, you mean that you build an app on it that otherwise like you yourself are able to build the app that would know. Yeah, I mean, what I built, there are all the analytic. I can build all the analytics dashboards that Google Analytics give you, including the geotargeting, geolocation information. And I can do it in a way in which I own my data every step of the way. And it's all built on Foundry native tools. Like I built that on Quiver, you know, like. And, like, and in, in what, so, so, so in, you said it was six hours. Six hours. I can, six, I mean, I don't have all the features of Google Analytics, obviously. Like yeah. it would take, it take a team of engineers probably six months to create an equivalent offering. Right. But, but like, but would it, be, would it be fair to say that if you were a gaming company, then you saved 150,000 yearly millions of cost. dollars. I mean, it's not just 150,000 because that's just the baseline entry point. It's the, how much you spend would be closer to half a million dollars based on the amount of data you need to process through analytics. So my yeah. God, my yeah. God, that is a big advantage. But like when, yeah. when we're saying like, yes, there's going to be multi-billion dollar companies that are just built on top of Foundry. Yes, that could look at AWS, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, 100%, dude, there's going to be like, if they can pull this off, they are like the next big thing in computing. They're going to be a platform, you know. Like wow. on par with the App Store platform, on par with AWS, on par with GCP. Or wow. more okay. like and their worst case scenario to look from another viewpoint is that the competition takes over and they become this niche, you know, for big They become Oracle. Huge... That's the worst, the worst case. They're Oracle. Sorry, they yeah. become. Oracle. You know, the, the worst Oracle. case for them is they're Oracle. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. 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 But, but I mean, because like now I'm looking at it as a stock investor, that's still... Yeah. Like for them to become the Oracle, it's still like a growth from here. I mean, so you have the worst case scenario, which is uh, that that they become this niche they supplier. Already, they already already are that niche kind of supplier, that Oracle ish enterprise thing. You know, there's a lot of companies that use Foundry. They can't even talk about it. You know, but like they they are really starting to make big inroads in the inter enterprise space. So I think they're they're already there and they're already setting themselves up for that. I, it's the question of whether or not they want to. They want to be a platform. I mean, I hear Sean say they want to be the next AWS. Yeah. So yeah. Like, I, I tell you, I think they must be working on opening it up to, uh, I, I mean, so. in the last investor presentation, they even, I mean, like they started with this, you know, paper usage. And I think they did, they did speak about modularizing Foundry, yep. but I, I don't know if they, if anything has happened on that. They, I don't remember any announcement that, because for them to modularize Foundry, it would be that they're, like handling standardized problems, right? Like, correct. Uh, they Foundry is modular. I think what he meant by that is that they're probably working on ways to sell it in a modular way. You know, it's yeah, more yeah. like the Adobe problem I was bringing up earlier. Like, yeah, you can't yeah. f with the salespeople's money. You know, and and it yeah. will manifest itself in insincere arguments about why you can't do something. You know, and and that I think is what he meant when he said we're making it more modular because it is already modular. You know. So like my foundry instance has a handful of apps. The people who run my, the multi-tenant stack that I'm in can pick and choose which modules I have access to. And I have to go and ask them, Hey, can you give me access to this module over here? Cause I'd like to experiment with it. They can enable it and voila, it's there, you know, like yeah, it doesn't take a yeah. fucking month or anything. It's like, it's just a, a selection for them and whether or not it's enabled in my stack. So it's like, 
Hundred percent. They can. There's nothing technically stopping them from doing that. Wow. Nothing. Cool. So uh, yeah, I I think uh, I I came to the end of my questions. This was very revealing. Like you you changed my mind about a future. Like because I I thought they were doing amazing with this approach that they had, and yep. uh, now I see that they are they have a. I I still as an investor think that. They're either going to grow quite nice or they're going to grow and, and blow up completely. But obviously, I, I want them to become this next, you know, AWS. It's so interesting I, I want... to think about, like, the thing the thing that it'll give you fodder for is, like, to word parse what is being said between, like, say, Sham and Carp or what you'll hear between their sales people and their technical people, you know? And, like, it'll give you a new perspective and you'll start actually picking out little things that are being said and go, I wonder what they're talking about behind the scenes. Like, what are these conversations really like, you know, like when... When Shams out there saying, "Hey, we're gonna, for what AWS was for developers the last ten years, Foundry is going to be for developers for the next ten years." And then Carp's out there saying, "Like we want to pick and choose the customers." You know, like what are those yeah. discussions like in the in the executive room? Like I'm sure they're all friendly, but like I'm just I, it gives you things to think about of like what are the actual dynamics playing out internally. And but but I wonder if whatever. yeah. I, I actually wonder if it, it's not because CARP is more selling on the government side. And, you know, and then, for example, if you decide not to sell in China commercial, you know, then then yep. you did choose who are your customers. And, there, and I mean, not a sure. lot of companies choose will cut off China. Like, that's kind of a bad example because of it, that's just a um, like a philosophy choice, you know, like. Yeah, but but do you think they do they do this that uh, like if I'm a commercial customer and I apply to them, then they like do an audit on the company? Yeah, and like... I mean, Carp gave several examples in recent interviews where he would hold town halls and they would talk to internally to all the employees about like, do we want to do this? You know, and I think he gave one example of a banking company. Uh, it's probably in South America, and then um, another one I think was like a marketing kind of deal for for tracking PII and stuff like that. Um, he famously has stated, even in the early days, there were multi-million dollar contracts that they debated internally whether or not to pick up. Um, that would have made a huge difference for them financially, but decided not to because of ethical objections. You know, so like their culture is very much built around this idea that we have powerful technology, we don't want it misused, and the way we the sorting mechanism is about Palantirians deciding who gets the platform. That's what I hear anyway when I hear him describe that. And that, and that absolutely cannot be like a scalable SaaS business, right? Like, yeah. And I get so I get why you would want to do that with government actors. But in the commercial space, in my opinion, this is a solvable problem with terms of service and multi-tenancy. Where you can just turn yeah, like off if you software. discover something, like you did, yeah. like let's say you discover that I don't know, they start working with OnlyFans and then they discover like, oh, this yeah. is pornography, and we didn't exactly. know, then you can just turn them off. That, this happens all the time. Like I don't understand yeah. why why this is. There's an industry standard solution for platform misuse, you know, and and yeah. you don't need a sort. The only reason I think it's an issue for them is that their culture grew up around around it differently. You know, like they evolved in a different way than the average startup today that needs to scrape together every dime it can from every customer it can, but then prevent misuse at the same time where preventing misuse for them is a really hard problem. They, you know, because like they're a small team, they've got thousands of people on their platform. So they, they leverage the industry standard standard method by default, whereas Palantir kind of, I, I feel like they evolved in a slightly different way and than the average startup, you know? And like, so their culture has sort of come to a different conclusion about how you handle these problems. And so, yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. And if we look at an average investor, because, you know, one, I feel that, for example, on Palantir, what's very hard for investors is that, you know, when you talk about Tesla, it's like you can yep. experience the car, you know? Right. And whatever company you, you speak about, you can experience the product, you know? And I feel yep. that on, on Foundry, what we as investors can experience is that, you know, you, you, you see that the customers are growing, you see that they have a positive net retention, which I, by the way, it's funny when people say that oh, Snowflake has 180% net retention and Palantir has 120 something percent. And then Snowflake is so much better. I was in the subscription business in this startup, you know, that failed. And yep. to keep customers for more than a year, it's like so very, hard. very, yeah, yeah, very, very hard. There is there is a so, distinction between commercial and B2B though. So like the, the, the uh, turnover rate in commercial is substantially higher than it is in B2B. And yeah, okay. there's, arg there's arguments to be made that B2B should have a naturally expanding TAM baked in. Like David Sachs makes that argument a lot about the baked in TAM of B2B SaaS. So like there is a baked in uh, TAM expansion typically in B2B SaaS. So 
I would be concerned if any B two B SaaS product didn't have a high net retention rate. You know, it's almost like you better have. Yeah, but 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 I mean, as an investor, it's almost like a product market fit confirmation that. that yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. The, the, yeah, the, no, I mean, but that's and again, that's why, like, if you see anything other than stellar performance, you should be concerned because there are arguments made by industry experts like David Sachs that B two B SaaS has a built in TAM expansion, so you should expect high net retention. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I feel that as an investor, as long as I see that Palantir has a positive net retention, they're getting new customers, I, I'm happy with them, right? And then it's the, the growth rate. Well, this interview has been amazing, Code. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Do, do you have anything you want to add in, in closing? Uh, or? If people out there are looking for an alternative um, path uh, other than college, and you're interested in engineering, check out um, software apprenticeships. There are, I operate um, open source curriculum to learn software engineering as a skill, as a trade basically. And then there are innumerable software apprenticeship opportunities from every major fin company today, including Microsoft, including Google. You can learn all about them. And if you want, if you have questions, jump on my discord, I can point you in the right direction where you can learn about software apprenticeships. But the more people we get looking at that as an alternative, I think the better and it's a, be a much better path to prosperity and learning the trade than the traditional computer science track. So if you're out there, you're interested, check it out. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Code. I hope that we can do this again. And Absolutely, man. I really enjoyed the interview and I love your audience. I'm interested to see what they what they come to the table with. And yeah, just keep up keep up the good work, man. Yeah. Awesome. We stay and I'll, come, I'll come back on anytime. Like I got a, if I get a window for sure. And, awesome. Uh, once Let's you do see 